welcome to this week's State by State. This week is Delaware, and it was a toughie. But let's get on to some facts about the state. Uh, Delaware has several nicknames, such as the First State, the Small Wonder, Blue Hen State, and the Diamond State. Its motto is Liberty and Independence. It gained the nickname the First State because it was admitted to the Union first on December 7th, 1787. Delaware is the second smallest state in the U.S., beaten only by Rhode Island. The total area is about 1,980 square miles. The highest elevation is near the Ebright Azimuth, and it is 447 feet above sea level. Very uh, low state. Its lowest point is the Atlantic Ocean at zero feet. <laughs> this is the Delaware flag. It is a buff colored diamond on a field of colonial blue with the coat of arms of the state of Delaware inside the diamond. Below the diamond, the date December 7th, 1787, declares the day which Delaware became the first state to ratify the United States Constitution. The current flag was adopted on July 24th, 1913. Remember when I said that Delaware is also known as the Blue Hen State? Well, it turns out that there is act that Delaware state bird is actually the Blue Hen Chicken. According to one story, uh, during the Revolutionary War, the men of Captain Jonathan Caldwell's company uh, recruited in Kent County and took with them game chickens that were said to be the brood of a famous blue hen and were no noted for their fighting ability. As you can see from the picture, the uh, chickens, this one being a hen, happen to have a very nice bluish color to their plumage, hence being called blue hens. The state flower of uh, Delaware is the peach blossom. The blossoms pictured here have not exactly fully opened to floral, but the colors are usually pink. And the um, flowers are produced in early spring before the leaves and are roughly uh, anywhere from a three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half broad. In the Victorian language of flowers, the peach blossom was known to carry the message, I am your captive. Delaware has a state insect. In fact, it's one of the few insects that will not send me screaming and running in another direction. That being the seven spotted ladybug, Coccinella septum punctata. They end up being only about 0.3 to 0.4 inches with uh, very distinctive spots and attractive colors that make them unappealing because they happen to have some very nasty uh, toxic alkaloids to uh, make it taste horrible. The uh, seven spotted ladybug is known for eating aphids, which make them very, very attractive to those who do, who do gardening. The state tree of Delaware is Ilex opaca, better known as the American holly. It is a medium-sized broadleaf evergreen tree growing around 33 to 66 feet tall and up and some may end up actually growing up to uh, 98 feet tall. The trunk diameter doesn't usually get larger than 20 inches, although sometimes they get up to 47 inches. The bark is light gray and roughened by uh, small warty lumps. Uh, it is known for its pretty green leaves and the uh, small red seeds 
small red fruits that it produces. Holly is a very popular winter, Christmas, and holiday decoration. And the wood of the tree has been known to be used for whip handles, engraving blocks, and cabinet work. In fact, it can be dyed to be, and be used as a substitute for ebony. The leaves can be dried and made into a tea-like beverage. American Holly Tea does not have caffeine. So is everyone ready for me to go into some facts about Delaware? Beyond the usual, you know, state stuff. But these are nice stories or places to see. And we're going to start off with the Harbor of Refuge Light. Originally called the Harbor of Refuge West End Light, even though the East End counterpart has long since been discontinued. It is a lighthouse built on the ocean end of the outer Delaware breakwater at the mouth of Delaware Bay just off Cape Henlopen. It was built uh, to function with the Delaware Breakwater East End Light in order to mark the National Harbor of, Sa of Refuge. This is actually, the one pictured right here, is the second uh, First Harbor Refuge Light because the first, in 1918, there was a horrible storm, and the storm threw waves over the top of the tower, and the lighthouse was moved two inches off its foundation, and another two in another storm in 1920. As a result, it was rendered uninhabitable, and then it was dismantled by the United States Lighthouse Service in 1925. On November 15, 1926, the new Harbor Refuge Light, the one that is currently the tower, was established. This one was a cast iron structure, was designed to endure the most intense of Atlantic storms. The current structure is 76 feet and is a white conical tower with a black lantern. The house itself sits on a cast iron caisson, which is built into the breakwater. And the pier of the tower, the pier of the tower is lined inside with reinforced concrete. They did not want this thing to move. It still works today, and today it, it operates with a Vega VRB25 operated by Solar Power and displays a flashing white light every five seconds that is visible up to 19 miles away. It also has two red sectors which can be seen 16 miles away. And, war and warns of nearby shoals. As a backup, there is a 250 mm, mm lantern operated by solar power, though its visibility is only nine miles. There is also a fog signal, which is an FA-232 and operated by solar power emitting two blasts every 30 seconds. The lighthouse was automated in 1973 and is still active to aid in navigation. The exterior of the tower was restored by the United States Coast Guard in 1999. Also in 1999, the Delaware River and Bay Lighthouse Foundation began working on its inside uh, restoration. In 2001, the Coast Guard repaired the docking platform and ladders to improve safety for access to the building. In April 2002, the Delaware River and Bay Lighthouse Foundation, a nonprofit volunteer organization, signed a lease to manage the structure. The lighthouse was damaged by Hurricane Isabel, but it was quickly repaired, although there is a concern that the lighthouse may be in danger due to the poor condition of the harbor of refuge breakwater onto which it is built. And now we move on from lighthouses to churches. This is the Holy Trinity Church, also known as Old Swedes. It's a historic church at East 7th and Church Street in Wilmington, De Delaware. It was consecrated on Trinity Sunday, June 4th, 1699. It was built by a predominantly Swedish congregation, formerly of the colony of New Sweden. The church was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1961 and is one of the few remaining uh, public buildings that reflect the Swedish colonial effort. The church is considered a part of First State National Historical Park. 
The church, which is still vis often visited by tourists, remains open today for tours and is still a working church, meaning it is still a part of the, uh, which means it is still an Episcopal parish, which is, has been since 1791 and is now part of the Episcopal Diocese of Delaware. There is a graveyard attached to the church, and, of course, it is believed to be haunted. Now, most people should be familiar with this logo. Um, prior to 2017, when it merged with Dow Chemical Company, it was simply E.I. DuPont de Nemours and Company, more commonly referred to as DuPont. It was founded in 1802 in Wilmington, Delaware, as a gunpowder mill by a French-American chemist and industrialist whose name I am not even going to attempt to pronounce because I do not do French. In fact, uh, Mr. Dupont was actually fleeing France because of the French Revolution and religious persecution against the Huguenot Protestants. Probably pronounced that horribly wrong. Uh, it started with the manufacture of gunpowder, and by the time of the Civil War, it was supplying one-third to one-half of the powder used by the Union Army. The Eleutherian Mills is now a museum and National Historic Landmark. DuPont has come up with plenty of inventions, running from uh, the invention of nylon, to Mylar, Draken, Orlon, Ly Lycra, and Tyvek, Nomex, uh, Kiana, Qu Corfam, Cor and Corian in the 1960s. And in fact, one of the uh, more important, possibly, uh, inventions was Kevlar in the 1960s, which, as most people know, go on to make bullet-resistant vests. What a lot of people don't remember is that DuPont uh, helped produce a lot of the raw materials for parachutes, powder bags, and tires during the Second World War. It also played a major role in the Manhattan Project in 1943, building and operating the Hanford Plutonium Producing Plant in Hanford, Washington. Okay, so now we're going on to the authors, and there were slim pickings this time. Like always, the authors were born in, raised in, or spent a significant amount of time in Delaware. In fact, I'm going to give you guys all a challenge. If any of you can find another author that we have in our stacks here from Delaware, I'll give you a shout out in the next video. How's that sound? Okay, well, let's start with the authors. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. This was, again, our state-by-state state for the week. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell, check out our Facebook page, our, U our uh, Twitter page, our Instagram, so you can keep up on all the stuff that is going on here at the Clinton Public Library. Next week, state-by-state state will be featuring Florida. Thank y'all, and y'all have a nice day.